Hello, I'm Eric Strong from Strong Medicine, and in this episode of Underappreciated Diseases, I'm discussing the anterior cutaneous nerve entrapment syndrome, or ACNES. What is it? ACNES is an often unrecognized cause of chronic well-localized abdominal pain caused by physical compression of a peripheral nerve innervating the abdominal wall. So what are the clinical features of ACNES? Well, obviously, as stated, it causes chronic abdominal pain, but there are a distinct collection of features typical of the pain from ACNES that help to distinguish it from other causes of chronic abdominal pain. For example, the pain is usually very well localized. Even when it can radiate over a larger area, there is almost always a very small, very specific, and very consistent spot where the pain is the worst. It's almost always unilateral, with a right-sided location being more common than the left. The pain is exacerbated by any movement or activity that results in tensing of the abdominal wall. This includes standing, coughing, and laughing. The pain is alleviated by lying supine, that is, lying flat on the back. Bending the knees while supine may lead to even more improvement. In addition to the pain, patients can also experience altered sensation in the general area of the pain. This includes allodynia, which is when stimuli not normally painful can elicit pain, for example, clothing or a sheet lightly brushing against the area. A mild pinch of the skin over the area can result in severe pain, sometimes referred to as the pinch test. A minority of patients may report a focal alteration in temperature perception, meaning an inability to reliably distinguish cold objects from room temperature ones, though this finding is more likely to be brought out during the exam than something the patient spontaneously describes. Regarding the pathogenesis, as mentioned, it's caused by the mechanical compression of a cutaneous nerve that innervates the surface of the abdomen. Entrapment of the nerve typically occurs at the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle, where the relevant nerves make two 90-degree turns. The condition is most common in young and middle-aged women. Other risk factors include obesity and tight clothing. There have also been case reports suggesting that pregnancy and oral contraceptives are risk factors as well, but this is less well established at the present time. Now, what about diagnosis? ACNES is a clinical diagnosis, meaning it's made only on the basis of medical history, symptoms, and physical exam findings. There are no blood tests or scans that can help diagnose it, though these may help to rule out alternative explanations. Unlike some of the other diseases in this video series, ACNES also does not have a universally agreed upon set of diagnostic criteria. Instead, we have a short list of features strongly suggestive of the diagnosis. For example, well-localized non-midline abdominal pain, sensory disturbances in the region of the pain, such as the aforementioned allodynia, on physical exam, patients will be noted to have increased pain with palpation during abdominal wall muscular contraction. The way to test this is to have the patient supine and, and as relaxed as possible. The examiner presses the abdomen in the spot of maximal pain. Then, while continuing to hold down the equivalent amount of pressure, the examiner asks the patient to do a bilateral straight leg raise, or alternatively, to raise their head and upper torso as if doing a crunch. In patients with visceral pain, that is pain from internal organs, the tensing of the abdominal muscles necessary to lift the legs or to do a crunch will actually protect the source of pain from your pressure, resulting in an improvement in the pain. However, in patients with abdominal wall pain, the tensing of the abdominal muscles will make the pain even worse. This is known as the abdominal wall tenderness test or Carnet's test after the physician who first described it, and worsening of the pain with tensing of the muscles is a positive Carnet sign. The real key to diagnosis, that is the feature that is most strongly suggestive of ACNES, is improvement in the pain following trigger point injection of a topical anesthetic such as lidocaine. So what should also be on the differential diagnosis of a patient presenting with possible ACNES? That is, what other conditions can have similar presentations? A radiculopathy 
is caused by the compression of a nerve root as it exits the spinal cord. The pain of a radiculopathy can feel similar to ACNES, but typically affects a larger area, including the back, and it does not typically have significant abdominal tenderness at a specific point. Thoracoabdominal neuropathy is a rare complication of diabetes, typically seen in older patients. The specific features of the abdominal wall pain can be very similar to ACNES, but there is no improvement with trigger point injection because there isn't a trigger point. A spagillion hernia is a type of abdominal wall hernia in which the peritoneum or abdominal contents herniate through a defect in the spagillion fascia, which is comprised of the transverse abdominal and internal oblique aponeuroses, which are sheets of fibrous tissue that serve the function of a tendon for these muscles. Spagillion hernias are classically identified by a palpable bulge in the anterior abdominal wall, but in some patients this is not apparent, and diagnosis and distinction from ACNES may require either ultrasound or CT scan. Abdominal wall endometriosis, or ectopic endometrial tissue, located within the abdominal wall is rare but well described. Pain from this sometimes but not always waxes and wanes with the menstrual cycle. Women may also have a tender, palpable mass present there. Postherpetic neuralgia is a chronic condition in which a narrow band of neuropathic pain and sensory abnormalities persists in the same distribution as a preceding attack of herpes zoster. In this case, the patient will almost always be able to report the history of zoster in the same distribution, which tends to affect an entire dermatome rather than just one small patch of skin. Zyphoidalgia refers to a hypersensitive xiphoid process or chronically inflamed xiphosternal joint, which can be distinguished from ACNES on account of its pain and tenderness being in the midline of the abdomen. And last is functional abdominal pain, which is an umbrella term describing several forms of chronic abdominal pain in which an organic cause has been ruled out. It can be distinguished from ACNES on account of its pain usually being more diffuse and either midline or bilateral. Some forms of functional abdominal pain are associated with eating or changes in bowel habits, neither of which should be the case in ACNES. And along those lines, when ruling out alternative explanations, it's important to recognize clinical features which cannot be attributable to ACNES. These include weight loss, fever and chills, any form of GI bleeding, diarrhea or constipation, malnutrition, and any abnormal lab test result. In short, because the pathology of ACNES is limited to a small part of the abdominal wall, it does not impact anything deeper than that, and it does not cause systemic symptoms aside from the psychological distress that can be caused by the typical delay in having the diagnosis of ACNES made. The presence of any of these features or a failure to improve even transiently to a properly performed trigger point injection should prompt a search for an alternative diagnosis. The foundation of treatment is trigger point injection, almost always performed with a combination of a topical anesthetic and a long-acting steroid like triamcinolone. While the topical anesthetic alone will provide immediate pain relief, which will then confirm the diagnosis, the pain relief can wear off after a few hours without the addition of a steroid. So typically, though not always, a steroid is included in the initial diagnostic injection even before the diagnosis has been confirmed. Sometimes a single injection is sufficient for resolution of the pain, while other times the injections need to be repeated several times over weeks to months. In addition to the injection, pain relief can sometimes be incrementally improved with over-the-counter anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen. However, the benefit of these meds are very modest and they should not be viewed as an alternative to the trigger point injections. For severe refractory cases, with persistent severe pain despite multiple injections, other options include chemical neurolysis, in which a small solution of aqueous 6% phenol is injected into the area adjacent to the nerve, and there is also surgical neurectomy, which involves the physical severing or removal of the causative nerve. Regarding prognosis, the chance of full resolution, or at least significant improvement, of the pain is excellent, provided that the condition is recognized and treated appropriately. 
That's it for this brief introduction to ACNES, or the Anterior Cutaneous Nerve Entrapment Syndrome, a frequently missed cause of chronic abdominal pain. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to Strong Medicine and checking out other videos in this series on underappreciated diseases.